blue. So I've got a new desk and now I have this blank wall I'm staring at instead of into the abyss of the kitchen. And I'd like to make some art for it. So here's the board I'm working with. It is from a old experiment I did with air dry clay, which is what I'll be working in again. I'd like to make a dandelion. People's either beloved or hated flower slash weed, deliciously bitter or disgustingly bitter. I don't know your taste. Well, let's get to work. Not much to say other than doing the thing. So I used aluminum foil for the inside as an armature. It'll give it some structure and keep you from using up your expensive clay. I also used um, Elmer's glue to attach it to the base and basically all the clay bits and pieces because it's water-based. Now, I'm going to speed up most of these clips because it would take forever, just in case you didn't know, but my hands definitely don't move that fast. So the dandelion, or Taraxacum T. officinal, but most of us know it as the dandelion, Although the name is, as stated in the Denver Post, and I quote, the musical phonetics of the word dandelion are a kind of linguistic accident. It's an anglization of the French dent de lion, or lion's tooth, perhaps inspired by the serrated leaf edges. I will put the article down below for you. It's a good read, and if you struggle with reading, it even has an audio reading for you, which I find very helpful. It also has a recipe within the article, so if you ever want to try dandelion yourself and curious about it, and you have a safe place to harvest it, because that is also very important. Also, with anything that is very potent, be careful if you have allergies. I saw it stated that people with ragweed allergies can be allergic to it. And then if you're taking any kind of medication, it's always a wise idea to talk to your doctor before trying anything that especially has been used in like folk medicine, anything considered medicinal that could interact with medication. Now if I bring my attention back to what I'm working on here in the clay, I've brought my tools out so I can make some finer details in those lion teeth edges. I use water to help smooth out the clay, being that it is water-based. It helps a lot. I would even suggest maybe wearing gloves because whatever is in the clay, my hands and fingers were just peeling. They were so dry after using this stuff. I don't think I saw anything. I always make sure to read what you need to protect yourself with, but I may have overlooked whether you're supposed to use gloves or not because, uh, again, my hands were very dry. So let me think on some of the things I've eaten. I've made dandelion wine which I thought it kind of turned out meh, but some friends of mine said it was really some of the better stuff that they've had that they've tried of dandelion wine or mead. I made it in mead style with a lot of honey. You actually need to add a lot of sugar to it because dandelions themselves, the flowers, they don't have really any nectar on the inside. They're very sparse in it. It's all mostly pollen, so when things land on it within the springtime, they're just mostly eating the pollen. It's what it's got to offer. Yeah, so adding fruits, dried fruit, and honey is generally how it's made. I've also had coffee. I had a dandelion, well, coffee, herbal mix. A herbal mix of dandelion I think it was called Dandy Blend, and it was really good. It would be almost creamy like a latte. And there used to be an old tea place we went to that would add cocoa in it as well. It was the Dandy Blend and cocoa. I highly suggest that. If you can find the Dandy Blend, that is a real treat. 
I have a few recipes saved aside for the future when I can find somewhere to harvest the dandelions because having a place that is safe from pesticides and anything you just wouldn't want to consume, it's very important. I'll put some of the recipes down below. You have to eat it pretty fast too. I would say it doesn't keep well overnight. Like you can't really put it in your fridge and the flowers will close up pretty, pretty fast. So it's something you want to consume right away. So the flowers themselves actually will pollinate, self-pollinate if they have to, but only as a last resort, which if, you know, their ability to throw seeds all over the place wasn't enough. The fact that they can reproduce like that just kind of set them up for taking over everything. So after putting so many leaves on, I moved on to doing the flowers and the seed pods. I used wire for the structure as well as the representation of the seed pods. This wasn't originally how I was going to do it. I was actually going to put lace on the seed pods to kind of make it look fluffy, but I lent out my glue gun and I kind of like how it's represented with the wire, so I kept it. Here I'm working on the flower itself. This one was kind of fun squishing it and then I took this little tool and pushed down into it. The curved shape kind of pushed it up like petals as I went. I started adding more water and a lighter touch to kind of pull up the clay. I didn't think it was going to work but it actually kind of pulled together all at the end. Then I wrapped the wire with clay to make the stem and then I bent it so to give it a little more depth and glued it down with Elmer's glue. Then I added some of the little leaves that are always on the back of the flower after it blooms and secured the stem to the flower itself with Elmer's glue as well.
And for the fun part, or even more fun because I really do love sculpting, but painting, my forte as it were, I set up a pretty simple palette of just some greens and reds, modifying the greens with red as I needed to, and then yellow for the flower. I did put some texture on the root, but I tried some dry brushing techniques kind of to help with the color and make it really look like it came out of the dirt. I know they can be kind of a rust orange. I did change it last minute so it looks more like a washed dandelion. Depending on what photos you look at, it looks a little more pale. But I think if I remember back, it is actually more rust color, but I may be wrong. I need to forage for them again. the background on this. I know I should have sanded it down beforehand from the other project. I just didn't care since it was for me. And it's not awful, but definitely should have. Thank you for joining me. I had a lot of fun with this. I was going to make the seed pods a little more fluffy but I kind of like them as, as I was going to put lace on the seed pods to make them look a little more fluffy, but I think it's pretty good the way it is. I just uh, loaned out my hot glue gun, so I would love to get some pieces like this into my shop. I just need to figure out how to ship them so they don't come in in a hundred little pieces because that would be devastating. I have a time-lapse painting coming up is my next video and being that it is fall and I am very basic and love all fall things I am hoping to get outside for some painting and fall festiveness so stick around for that and yeah thanks for spending some time with me and I will see you later <laughs>